It's also at the heart of modern technology. One of the most important devices built on this principle is the tunnel diode. Invented in the late 1950s by Leo Isaki, the tunnel diode relies on quantum tunneling to conduct electricity in ways classical devices cannot. Unlike normal diodes, tunnel diodes allow electrons to tunnel directly through an energy barrier. This gives them unusual electrical properties, including extremely fast switching speeds. That's why tunnel diodes were used in some of the earliest high-speed electronics and why they're still relevant in microwave and quantum technologies today. Another tunneling-based invention is the scanning tunneling microscope. This groundbreaking tool uses the tunneling effect between a sharp metal tip and a surface to map materials atom by atom. Without tunneling, we wouldn't have this window into the quantum world or the nanotechnology revolution it inspired. Even in modern computing, as we shrink transistors down to the scale of just a few nanometers, tunneling becomes impossible to ignore. At these scales, electrons don't care about barriers the way we'd like them to. They sneak through, causing leakage currents that challenge engineers to design chips that are both smaller and efficient. In short, tunneling is both a powerful tool and an engineering headache. Quantum tunneling doesn't just challenge engineers, it challenges our very understanding of reality. Think about it. Tunneling means particles can appear where they shouldn't without the classical energy to get there. It's not magic, it's math, but it forces us to rethink what it means for something to be impossible. It also raises deep questions about determinism. In the quantum world, outcomes aren't guaranteed, they're probabilities. Tunneling reminds us that reality at its most fundamental level is not rigid but fluid, smeared with possibility. To ground this, let's return to that tennis ball. If you threw it at a wall a billion trillion times, quantum physics says that, in principle, there's a minuscule chance it might one day tunnel through. Of course, for macroscopic objects, the probabilities are so absurdly small that you'd be waiting longer than the lifetime of the universe. But at the tiny scale of electrons and protons, the odds are big enough to matter. That's why tunneling shows up in atoms, in stars, and in silicon chips, but not in your everyday life. So where does tunneling take us next? Researchers are already exploring tunneling for quantum computing. Where controlling quantum effects is key, there's also interest in tunneling transistors, which could revolutionize energy-efficient electronics. And who knows, 